So I want to give you another um, another look at MiniNet that we looked at in our lab, um, in the, that's within, it's inside the CyberOps uh, workstation. But I wanted to show you the actual MiniNet itself, which is in its own VM. And so I, I'd like you to actually uh, run this, and you, you can try to run it on your Raspberry Pi if you want to, but you could run it on your own machine as well. I'm just going to give you uh, some tips on how to do that. Um, so this is the mininet.org page. Um, sudo uh, mn will get that thing going. Um, the getting started and the walkthrough are two things that you want to check out. But the first thing you want to do is go grab a um, VM. And I just use this uh, this Ubuntu image. Um, it doesn't matter which one you do. Um, for this particular case, uh, we're not going to do anything um, totally crazy that we have to have version 24, you know, um, so uh, 16 is great. And then uh, what's going to happen is that's going to download a zip file, and then when you open that zip file up, you're going to get uh, two VMs. Uh, one is the settings file, one is the actual disk, so it's uh, 2.6 gigs. And you just uh, import that into VirtualBox, and you're gonna you're gonna start your um, start your VM, and you will be able to um, basically log in. So once you get that running, it's MiniNet, and the password is MiniNet. And what we're gonna do here in this particular case is we're going to actually. Um, need to use the graphical portion of the screen. So one of the things that we had when we used this VM in uh, the CyberOps Workstation VM is we used the graphical user interface to make this uh, system function. And so there was quite a bit of overhead on that. We needed more RAM to get in there and run that machine. Uh, so we're gonna run this in, because you may wanna run this on your Raspberry Pi, um, and you can also use this in your projects for the things that I'm going to show you um, in that you don't have to use MiniNet, uh, but you can use some of the tools that I'm going to show you, namely the X window system to get graphical apps to run, even if you have a non-graphical interface on your Pi. So the first thing we will need to do is grab one other piece of software, um, and that is going to be the X Ming. That is if you're running Windows, you want to use X Ming, which is an X server. It's a really small little tiny program that installs. It has an icon that looks like this. Um, you guys have probably seen it on my desktop before. Um, that's how I actually interpret uh, X window data sent over the network. I use it in my um, Windows subsystem for Linux applications. I use it uh, on remote servers. If you have a Mac, you can use XQuartz. Uh, that's another program that will run it. It is an X Windows server. So you do that the very same way. They're both very identical programs. So um, once you actually turn that on, you can actually go in and actually start that program and it will just boot up and it'll just leave a little icon um, on the Mac side of things, when you start it up, you actually will get an X term that runs, um, that shows you that it's actually working. So once we have our VM going, I'm going to go back over there and now what I want to do is I want to use a, I want to create an environment variable here. And I will do that with the X4 command and the display environment variable. And I'm going to have to tell it an IP address. Okay. But what IP address do I use? I will show you. Uh, because I'm using NAT mode network drivers in this VM, which is what it defaults to, I'm going to have a gateway when I put in the route command, it's going to show me my routing table inside this machine. I'm going to have a gateway of 10.02.2. .2. That's 
that actually is my host machine's IP address. So when I use that Windows machine that's running this VM, it's going to be 10.0.2.2. So that's what I want to make my display. So if I export display equal 10.0.2.2, I put a colon and 0, 0.0. This is the number of the screen. So it's display 0, and I could do 1 or 2 or 3. Um, I could actually have any number of displays in setup in my system. I can send windowing data all over the place. As long as it's routable, I can send it, which is very cool. Now, what this means for you is if you have any VM, any operating system on the Raspberry Pi running in headless mode, you can actually run graphical apps without using the VNC viewer or having to load a desktop. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to open up my bash RC file. And I'm going to go down to the bottom of the file. And I like to use the, the GG command to go all the way down. All right. And so that will, sorry, big, little G will get me to the top, big G get me to the bottom. So notice I've gone ahead and put this command in here. Export display equals 10.0.2.2 colon 0, .0, .0. That's my um, environment variable. And I'm going to go ahead and put one more command in here. And it is an alias command. If you notice up at the top, there's another alias command. And I'm going to go ahead and make two of these. One is for the xterm command. And I'm going to, I'm going to actually, in what, what this alias command will do is it will, when I type xterm, it will substitute everything inside these parentheses, inside these, sorry, inside these quotes, for what I type. So I'm going to send my output, my standard output, to the null device. Then I'm going to actually use device 2, which is standard error, and I'm going to send it to the same device that the, that standard output is going to 2 greater than ampersand 1 now I'm going to run the whole process in the background with the ampersand so that is um, the way that I not only do I um, do I go ahead and send my output into a black hole but I also free up my command line to do another thing I'm going to make one more of these. Um, let's see. I'm going to do the Wireshark by itself, and I'm going to make this um, Wireshark G sudo. Super user do Wireshark dash GTK, which is the graphical toolkit. And I'm going to do my same redirect. Okay. Colon W for right, colon Q for quit. And I'm going to log out. And when I log back in, it's going to execute my bash RC. And I'm just going to double check real quick uh, my alias command. Make sure everything's there. Okay. And I do see those two alias commands are there. I'm going to go ahead and try uh, Wireshark. And boom, there we go. Look at that. Beautiful.
I gotta click start. Now the one thing I don't like about this in this particular case is I'm getting this X11 data um, sent to me because it's coming over the connection. And I don't really want it or need it. We can stop that. And I'm going to go ahead and close this. So I obviously know my my alias command work. So I have complete control, except it doesn't let me <laughs> take control of that. That's kind of frustrating. Oh, okay. Um, So, um, luckily I can go in here and I still have a command prompt, so I'm going to show you how if something happens weird like that, you can just list your processes with PS. And... Uh, PS-A. And here's my Wireshark process. I'm going to go ahead and kill it. got to do it as a super user, weird, uh, but anyway, that I don't know why that uh, hosed up there for a minute, but it did. Okay, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start my mini net. Now I have a um, couple things, I have a controller, I have a switch, I have two hosts, um, and they're ready to go. So if I do my X term like we did in the class, I have I'm going to have my host uh, H1, H2. Now in order to get my mouse out, I got to release it with the control key. But I got my two hosts here, and I can and I can utilize these. So I'm going to go ahead and do something on host 2. I'm going to show my interfaces. I can pick. So I'm going to go ahead and on host 2 I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and create a pcap file. So TCP dump I'm going to monitor interface h2-eth0 and I'm going to write the h2.pcap and then right here I'm going to ping 10.0.0.2 Alright, so we're just going to get some ICMP traffic I'm going to go back over here and hit Control c to kill my TCP dump. And... I'll have to get out of Minimat. I, what I really want to do is actually have, before I start Minimat, is I want to get... I, I want to actually get Wireshark going. Uh, that way, I can have that running I can start my mini net <clears throat> and do whatever I want to do, but keep the Wireshark running. So um, I'll, this will be available to me all the time. Now, what I can, what I'll be able to do is, um, is just open. Uh, here's my here's my pcap file. Uh, I call it H2. And notice what I have is I have the um, only the ICMP and only the ARP traffic. 
that I can actually use. But I have a working copy of Warshark. This is another demo I did of uh, doing the very, very same thing from H1. So I could open that one up too and look at it. Um, but I'm able to examine these uh, these packet capture files. So if I went and created another um, another set, I would be able to use it and use this Warshark. Um, I can um, have full control over the app. Uh, and I still have control over my network. So if I want to go into the switch uh, and look at that one, All right, here's my here's my switch. All right. So um, this capability is very cool, uh, and you would probably want to use this um, this X term and display to control some things with your Pi or other projects uh, and even um, experimenting with what you can do by looking at network traffic uh, and seeing the PCAP files using TCP dump. Um, remember, you just have to tell it um, on TCP dump, you have to tell it what interface you want to capture. So um, in this particular case, I have um, two interfaces on this switch, so if I want to run um, TCP dump, I have to actually tell it that I want to capture traffic on either one interface or the other, or a list of them. Uh, but I hope you enjoy this and you're able to actually utilize it, and so I would like to see what you come up with.